Hey everyone, this is Sean from the Ashland Fly Shop. Just wanted to walk you through how I like to tie a green butt skunk. Um, materials are going to be a Alec Jackson hook in size five, um, ice dub in both black and chartreuse, slopping in black, um, a collar is gonna be in guinea in natural, um, brassy copper wire, and I think, oh, and calf tail and flash for the wing. So to start off, just gonna do uh, some thread wraps to get a base of thread. And I like to go right before the point to leave this, it's kind of like a trailing hook in the back. One material I forgot to cover uh, is for the tail, uh, golden pheasant crest in red. So to start off, we're gonna take our golden pheasant and we're gonna orient it so that it curves up, um, kind of an Atlantic salmon style way of doing a tail. And I'm gonna have this go about just to the end of the hook. Um, since we're starting so far forward, it's nice to have it, you know, end about here. Um, just gonna tie that in, make sure that it's curving the way I want. That's gonna be just fine. And then I'm gonna wrap this up the hook. Trim it about there. And I really like to keep on my traditionals, keep tying the material forward and cutting it at the front of the hook so that I keep an even taper and um, give the body some, uh, some density. So now I'm gonna go back to where I tied in my tail. Gonna tie in my copper wire. Now you can do this in a lot of sizes. You could use large too. Um, Brassy is just what I had lying around, but um, anything to just give it some segmentation and um, keep the dubbing from coming apart in the future because that's where this fly will fall apart is in the body. So now I'm gonna take some chartreuse ice dub Dub it on. No need for doing it in a dubbing loop or anything. You can if you want, but I just like to do it normally. So one thing I like to do is I'll get it tied on and ice dub tends to stick together so I can pull down, keep twisting, and it'll cinch that body all together. Keep adding some. I like to go pretty sparse, add as I need it. Now the length of your green bud is kind of up to you. Um, I tend to keep mine pretty average, not too long, not too short, um, but you can make them a lot larger. I think I'm gonna go about there. Trim all that off. Tie it in. Now I'm gonna take my black ice stub. Just do the same thing. So I'm gonna keep the same density of body. I'm not gonna make this any thicker or thinner. I want this to transition nicely from the green butt into, uh, into the, uh, the main body of the fly. And I'm gonna wrap this till just below or uh, just behind the eye, um, leaving enough room for our hackles and making a nice head. Stop just about there.
This way you don't crowd the head and you have plenty of room to tie in your hackle. Give it a couple wraps. And now I'm gonna wrap this wire. Actually gonna counter wrap it. Pretty open wraps, not, nothing too close together. And that actually, I'm gonna undo that. Go even a bit more open on that. This is mainly just to keep that dubbing together. That's the main purpose of it for me anyway. Tie it off. Give it some real tight wraps. Oh, and by the way, the thread I'm using is Vivas 50D. Really like this stuff. Um, and uh, it's thin enough where I don't have to worry about crowding the head. All right, next I'm gonna have Schloppen in black. Um, I like Schloppen over Saddle Hackle just because it gives me the look I want on my uh, traditional flies. I'm not really a huge fan of Saddle Hackle, although if that's what you like, uh, more power to you. Um, I just personally like how webby uh, the Schloppen kind of lays over the body. I'm gonna just double check my lengths. I don't want it too long, but I also don't want it to be too short. Um, that's about right there. Trim off all this material at the back. Sweet. And yeah, I'm just gonna tie that in. Tip first. I don't want too much slopping because I want to leave room for my uh, my guinea at the front. Give it some nice wraps. Trim it. But now we're just going to start palmering it forward. I want it all laying towards the towards the hook instead of um, curving away from the hook. I want to make like a t an hourglass or teardrop shape um, towards the, the shank. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do actually about that much. Gave myself a little bit too much material there, but that's okay. Just tie that in. Pull it all back, give it some securing wraps. Now for our guinea, I really like guinea feathers that are on the darker end for my dark flies. Um, this one is, is kind of what I'm looking for, although the other feathers in the patch will work. Um, you only usually get about four or five of these if you're lucky. Um, but I'm gonna tie this in the exact same way, trim the, the back off. Be careful pulling the, the feather or the um, piece of the feather off because with guinea, it's pretty easy to break the stem. But fortunately, I didn't do that. We're gonna pull it forward, get ready to palmer it. I only want a couple wraps of this. This is really just my finishing feather. Some securing wraps. Guinea always wants to fight you when you're trying to wrap it, but do the best you can. It's really mainly just to give it some different coloration at the front. That's about all I want right there. Now before I tie my calf tail, I'm actually gonna take 
a bodkin and kind of run it through all of my, my hackles that I just did just to make sure all those tips are separated. They'll tend to kind of clump together and this way you're kind of mixing the schlop in with the, uh, with the um, uh, guinea. And now you've you got this nice blended look. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. If you've got any that kind of want to go crazy, you can always trim those out. But this one looks just about right. Next, we're going to do our calf tail just in white. You can do this in a lot of different colors. You could do it with black. Um, but the, the green butt skunk traditionally just had a white um, calf tail wing. And so I really do a lot less calf tail than I think is orthodox, but um, I just, I don't really want this to make the fly float too much. When I'm tying green butts, I really like to have them be a subsurface fly, um, not be, you know, on the surface too much. Um, so just a little bit of calf tail to give it some ballast in the water is what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to do this. I'm going to make the length of this just past um, where my schloppen ends, kind of right where my tail ends. Um, just tie this in. Make sure you tie this in tight because calf tail is pretty slippery. That's looking about right. But I think I did just a little bit too far. Forward. Okay, yeah, that's looking good. Um, now we're gonna trim this. And you can leave some uh, of your tag end here to give the head a little bit more substance. Um, I'm going kind of short on this one, but it's fine. I'm going to make sure to tie this in nice and tight. And then the last thing I want in this fly is some flash. So I'm just doing um, some crink crinkle mirror flash. And this is off of the blue. Um, patch, but this is just some normal pearl colored. And I'm actually going to grab I have two strands here. We'll line these up together. And I really just want this on top of the wing. Try to mix it as much into that calf tail as I can. And I'm roughly going to tie it in on one side, on my side, and then on your guys' side. And that will be my flash. this back you could do more flash less flash I tend to like having a bit and then I'm gonna kind of cut these at different lengths if I can just past the calf tail so it mixes in and that is pretty much our green butt skunk I'm just gonna finish up the head Tie it off. This head's a bit larger than I would normally do, but it's going to be fine. I'm just going to do like a four turn whip finish. Give it some glue, if I can find it. Just using Softex, although you could use anything. I like the UV glue too, it makes it really clean, but that's what I've got lying around. And there we go. It's a green butt skunk for you. This is a great fly in the mornings and the evenings in the early summer all the way up until late fall. So thank you.